Now, you may be thinking, hey, what's wrong with meeting to some transgender people? I mean, didn't Jesus meet with sinners, hang out with prostitutes, tax collectors? Yes, we're going to talk about that today. The article goes on, but he has strongly opposed gender theory and has not changed church teaching that holds that homosexual acts are intrinsically ordered. In 2021, he allowed publication of a Vatican document asserting that the Catholic Church cannot bless same-sex un unions since, quote, God cannot bless sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ was born amongst sinners, died amongst sinners, ministered to sinners. So who can point their sinful little finger and say, how dare you? Aren't you being like a Pharisee? Rigid, religious people who constantly criticize Jesus because he ate with tax collectors. Isn't that what we're dealing with here? It is Catholic belief, Catholic custom, that the laity and even more, the clergy, enter into evangelization, the proclamation of the gospel in the most sinful, the most depraved, and the most disordered parts of society and for people. You know, I was just reading uh, Joshua and Judges, and there's the story of Rahab the harlot. She's a harlot. She's a prostitute. She's a whore. And yet, she works with the people of Israel. She and her house are saved. So the whole idea that we have to be perfect, that we have to be saints before we walk into the door of a church or encounter Jesus Christ is false. But here's the distinction. Repent and sin no more. The message of Jesus Christ is, Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will refresh thee. Cast your cares upon him. Come to him broken, wounded, sinful, dirty. Woe is me, I am a man of unclean lips. But see, we're not Lutherans where we just believe that we have faith alone and then God imputes righteousness onto a ledger or onto a banknote. We believe that Jesus Christ calls us to transformation. He calls us not to remain filthy. He calls us to become gold, to become pure, to become what the Catholic Church calls saints. And the way you become a saint is you obey the words of Jesus to the best of your ability with his grace. Go and sin no more. Jesus comes to you. He spends time with you. He talks with you. But he says, look, the stealing, no more. The adultery, it's got to stop. The fornication, has to stop. You have a concubine living with you. What's a concubine? Someone who lives in your home where you, in which you have relations, procreative relations, but you're not married. That's a concubine. Nowadays, they call it live-in boyfriend, live-in girlfriend. I advocate, let's just use the biblical word concubine. The problem in this scenario is no one is being told Go and sin no more. I'm going to get a little frank. It's very clear in Scripture that you cannot enjoy sexual pleasure if you are not in a real marriage as defined by God, which is Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. Why is it that we would say that homosexuality or cutting off your male organs or your female organs, all that, why we would say, mm, don't do that. God doesn't want you to do that. That's not what God designed. I mean, it's part of natural law and it's part of the Bible. Read Romans chapter 1. And so what Francis is missing is the go and sin no more. 